Researchers at Northwest University have uncovered ARVs in water sources. Now, some of the traces have been found downriver of water treatment plants. Let's unpack the story with Professor Surani Horn from the Occupational Hygiene and Health Research Initiative at NWU. Prof, it's great to talk to you. Thanks for coming on. Is this expected in some way, um, just given the number of people who are on ARVs in the country, that it would turn up in even small amounts in water sources? Yeah, so one must remember that there is a high number of people that use ARVs and wastewater treatment plants are not designed to remove these type of chemicals. The pharmaceuticals, as we call them, which include ARVs, wastewater treatment plants typically remove solids and um, do bacterial treatment. So in that sense, one could expect that there would be traces of these compounds in the surface water. Right. But you're saying that the traces um, are far beyond what is expected, far beyond what is sort of the global expected trace amounts. Yes, so it's much, much higher, but we don't have any other country to compare it to since we are the country with the largest mm -hmm. antiretroviral treatment program. So it is much higher than uh, in, in other um, global north countries, such as Europe. It has been detected in the Netherlands and Switzerland as well, but not as high as in South Africa and some African countries to an extent. Hmm. In terms of um, it reaching drink drinking water, um, what, what might the implication of, of that be? So... The antiretroviral drugs in the water is um, really of low, low levels. So one would not expect a direct effect on human health. Mm -hmm. The real risk comes to um, the aquatic environment and the ecosystem um, where the animals can be exposed or well, are exposed to um, low levels over a long time. So in the drinking water, um, there's no immediate risk to right. human health from drinking this water. Yeah, I see that in your, your study it says freshwater snails exposed to ARVs showed altered embryonic development, um, bacteria and viruses that regulate microorganisms in wastewater treatment also severely affected. So, so that means essentially that um, the bacteria that we rely on to keep the waste, to, to, to keep the water up to a particular standard, that that bacteria could be affected. So, so is the end game here that we're going to end up with a lower quality of water overall? So these compounds have been found to have various effects and it would cause a decline in the water. But one must also keep in mind that IRVs are not the only chemicals in the water. There might be other pharmaceuticals present as well. And this makes a chemical cocktail effect um, where sometimes the combined effect is greater than individual compounds. And these effects are not always immediately visible, but mm -hmm. can accumulate over time, leading to um, undesired effects. But, but we still don't know what the, what the effects um, at the worst end of the spectrum might be. No, we don't. Um, so there has been some proof of um, effects on liver damage, well, fish getting liver damage, um, and affecting their hormone levels and their reproduction. But in the case of animals, these are laboratory-based studies and they are tested in isolation and sometimes only to one or two compounds. Mm -hmm. So we have established that in certain studies, but for the environment, the real case scenario might be quite different. Yeah. Yeah. And as you say, ARVs are not the only sort of chemical compounds or um, medical uh, treatment people are, are receiving. Um, there must surely be a whole range of other chemical compounds in our wastewater. The question is, how do we move forward on this now? If um, And you say that there is no sort of uh, global average of how much should be detectable in our water. But if it's uh, several places above worldwide standards, um, is the next step to sort of go to our uh, water treatment plants, um, uh, organizations like Rand Water, Johannesburg Water, and the rest of the water utilities around the country, and for those kinds of issues to now be considered and steps to be taken? Yes, so the biggest um, source that we think might be wastewater treatment plants, because 
as AOVs are excreted, they move into the sewage um, lines that goes to a waste of the treatment plants. And in sometimes that is also a point of concentration where all of the sewage comes together. So I think the improvement of wastewater treatment plants would definitely um, make a difference. So investigating other types of technologies such as activated carbon filters or ozonation or membrane filtration, although that, ha that has been tested on smaller scales and not as big as wastewater treatment plants. But in addition, I think awareness on disposal of medication is also an important point. And then also the lack of sewage infrastructure to some informal yeah. settlement. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I see some of the recommendations that um, the university handed over to the Water Research Commission included um, enhancing wastewater treatment methods, uh, which is a difficult ask in the context where we are already struggling with just basic water and sanitation provision. Yes, so this definitely adds to the water crisis, I think so. Um, hopefully, yeah, there's now, now some awareness and uh, some steps should be taken. Yeah, absolutely. Important story this, but really, um, I think at the beginning levels of what we are coming to understand about the chemicals found in water sources. Uh, Dr. or rather Professor Sarani Horn is with the University of the Northwest. Um, this study that's uh, revealed dangerous levels of ARVs in South Africa's water sources.